The Skibon Deco franchise reached its peak in the 80s with its live action TV shows. The series has its origins as a manga series by the same name. Skibon Deco can roughly be translated to Delinquent Girl's Detective. Skabon Deca's premise of a delinquent girl as a detective and undercover cop is a simple concept, but it was actually birthed from a happy accident. Author Shinji Wada intended the manga to be a high school drama, but his editors at Haku Shensha mistakenly interpreted his concept as a detective story starring a high school student. Wada would have combined both concepts to the current Skabon Deca as we know today. I'm only going to be covering the TV series as of right now, and in this video in particular I'll be talking about the very first season starring Yuki Saito. The TV drama would air on Thursdays at 7.30pm and ran from April 11, 1985 to October 24th, 1985. With 24 episodes in total, the TV series is full of 80s cliches and low budget actions and I loved every second of it. I'm going to be talking about the premise of the show but nothing major outside of that. Should you want to see the show for yourself one day, don't worry. I won't be ruining that experience for you. There's so much Escape on Deca, and knowing what I'll tell you today won't take away from your enjoyment of the show should you pick it up. The show follows the life of Saki Asamiya. After getting scouted by a mysterious organization, she helps to fight crime and solve mysteries throughout Japan against her will. The reason Saki does all this is because the organization wants a high school student, and the missions that she works in is typically in a high school. As a high school student herself, she's the perfect undercover cop for most situations. While typically the police force would use a gun, having a firearm like that won't help fly in a high school. So for the most unassuming disguise for a badass undercover delinquent girl detective, she has to fight with a matching unassuming weapon. And in this case, it's a yo-yo. The yo-yo was initially a modified magic yo-yo champion by the toy company Senmori, before its appearance was to a more similar look seen in the Skeban Deca manga. This special yo-yo was actually made by the mysterious organization that Saki works under, and has a police quest inside of it. And just like in every undercover cop movie or show you've ever seen, she's gotta make sure that those guilty know that they're against a person of justice showing off the police quest before arrest. The Sakura no Daimon. While working under this mysterious organization, Saki is acquainted with Jin, the messenger for her detective work. As an equally mysterious 191 centimeter man, he tends to help her whenever he sees fit with his signature yellow car. Then there's Sanpei, a normal high school boy who has a thing for badass girls and naturally loves to hang out with Saki whenever she allows it. <laughs> these three characters would be the pillars of the show. While the show has its own fair share of supporting characters, it's these three characters that would ignite the flames for the most impactful and significant moments of the TV show. Let's just talk about the faces of the characters Saki, Asami, Ajin, and Sanpei. Starting with Yasuyoshi Masuda, the guy who plays Sanpei. He was born on October 6, 1964, and Matsuda was known as a formal child actor. I unfortunately could not find much information about him. To make up for that, I looked up his name on YouTube and the first result was some guy with a similar name. So let's just watch that instead. Hi, I'm Yasu. Uh, welcome to Action First TV. Mr. Funny Face, episode 1. Mr. Funny Face. Uh, I'm sure he's gonna entertain you guys. Like this. Even when you hear this cool action, very, very funny first after all. Saki's mentor and co-worker Jin Kyoichiro, played by Nakakoji, was born on June 26, 1951 in the Kyoto Prefecture. While not as accomplished as Saito, he has a good reputation for great supporting roles ranging from 1995's My Soul is Slash to 2003's Kamen Rider 555. If you're an avid watcher of old Super Sentai, you might know him as Dai Ranger's mentor in Gosei Sentai Dai Ranger. Not much is publicly known about Naka outside of his roles in movies, and he would sadly pass away December 19th, 2015 at the age of 64. Kesuke Tsuchiya, who worked with Naka and Gosei Sentai Dai Ranger, had this to say. Mr. Koji Naka, aka Doshikaku, has passed away. Such sudden news has not allowed me to make sense of it. I was with Ro yesterday, so I was able to cope with it, but when I'm by myself, the tears will not stop. Rest in peace. Saki Asamiya was played by Yuki Saito. She had an interest in releasing music and did so with her debut album Axia in 1985. While idol groups like Onyako Club would find success in happy and fun music, her success would be in the complete opposite direction. 
Yuki Saito, born on September 10, 1966 in Yokohama in Kanagawa Prefecture, June 21, 1985. She would release her first single, Sotugyo, the Japanese word for graduation. It's a story about a girl and a boy faced with the bittersweet nature of graduation. In Japanese schools, graduation is usually the time for students to confess to their crushes. But when a boy confesses to the singer, she friendzones him, despite returning his feelings for her. The singer feels that they shouldn't be promised love when he'll find someone better somewhere in Tokyo and to forget about her. She doesn't know if this will happen, but she believes in it anyways to protect herself. She reassures him that they'll continue to be friends, but she understands it will likely be the last time they'll ever see each other. She protects her feelings by never expressing them, to never have her love broken and taken away from her. The fear of heartbreak scares her into never opening up her heart. This song would prove successful, receiving the sixth spot in Oricon, and it was number 34 best-selling single of 1985 in Japan. This song has little relation to Escape on Deck as a whole, but I feel it was important to mention because this song was very crucial to Saito's career. Her success from Escape on Deck would kickstart her future, lending her more acting roles, and even getting one of her songs to become an opening to an anime called My Soni Ikoku. Saito was also infamous for being a member of the LSD church. Or another way to put it is that Saito was a Mormon. Because of her belief Saito wouldn't work Sundays and refuses to smoke in any capacity, so much as to use a fake cigarette used by asthma patients in the 1986 film Kosuru Onatachi. Throughout her career, she would star in around 50 TV dramas and 33 films. Later on in life, an adult Saito would marry a salaryman in 1994, and they have a son and two daughters. Saito would still do acting roles under her maiden name. She would do a variety of acting roles from serious to comedy. <laughs> It's clear when watching Escape on Deca that Sake throughout the show has little to be happy about. I'm sure we all dreamed of becoming some superhero who fights all the bad guys in some amazing and flashy way with our choice of weapon, but it was never Sake's choice to do so, and she suffers for it. She may handle herself greatly in these situations, but that's only because she's determined to see it her way, never stopping for distractions, only getting the bare minimum done to succeed. From the stress of having to work for the mysterious organization, risking her life every day for seemingly no reason, and having to juggle her high school life on top of that, Saki despite that puts a fake smile and lives two lives. If I were to describe Saki Asamiya in one word, it would be melancholic. Something bigger than her in the shadows is controlling her life, and she has to take it for the betterment of her future. Behind the action scenes is a young girl who only wants one thing, yet seemingly has to take on all of Japan just to do it. This idea would be illustrated in the ending song for the show. Shiori Hono, or White Blaze, is the song that plays at the end of every Skate on Deca episode. The song describes a girl who can't quite get her feelings out for her crush. Her heart burns from the feeling that the love of her life seems to be slipping away as her crush stands next to another girl at a bus stop. The city around her fades to a colorless mess, and her tears burn of white flames, as an equally bright flame burns within her. It's unpleasant. Despite that, she hesitates to tell her crush how she feels. She attempts to confess to him, but the wind interrupts her, and in hesitation, she freezes up and her crush gets on the bus and leaves. Her tears turn to snow, still frozen knowing full well she is in love with him, but only she will ever know that. White in Japan is considered a color of purity and innocence. The color white is mentioned a ton in the song. The city losing its color, her tears burn of a white flame, which eventually becomes snow. An innocent pure love that was taken away from her, from her own lack of action. Her heart worn on her sleeve, but never seen, but broken anyways. Aside from the romantic theme of the song, you can boil it down to a young, innocent girl who cries of having something taken away right in front of them. Melancholy can often be described as sadness caused by loss, or in particular when there is no obvious cause. Oftentimes when someone has a sort of internal battle within themselves, they'll distance themselves from others, or behave more cold, as to protect themselves from any more conflict. This song and Sochi Gyo have themes of melancholy, one of heartbreak, the other of fear of heartbreak. Mainly through Saito's eyes do you really get that feeling of melancholy. Escape on Deca is truly a Japanese crime drama at the end of the day, but under the hood is a girl who is at odds with her emotions with the situation. Saki Asamiya goes through so much just to make sure that she needs to do to get her life together, but at the price of her high school life, essentially losing her youth, something not many people would sacrifice in 1980s Japan or anywhere for that matter. When you're young and free, the last thing you want to do is be controlled and at risk of losing your life with no choice in the matter, but she fights on anyways. 
I wanted to watch Devon Dakov to see a Japanese 80s live action schoolgirl fight criminal. Instead, I got an invisible conflict of the sacrifices of a young Saki Asamiya. It may have had a small budget to work with, but I think after 40 years, I enjoyed it as much as anyone back then did. With season 1's Gabe on Deka out of the way comes a new season. And with that, remember, Saki forever. やれたとは思いませんけども、でもあの私自身はあやって面白かったし、みんなが面白がって見てくれるからそれで楽しんでくれればいいなと思ったんですけど、私らしくやってそれで本当に無理をしないでやっていけば私の個性っていうものがある